What is up, people? The internet, it is me, Real American, back with a new video. And today, we have a significant development brewing out of the United States Senate. And in particular, in the state of Kentucky, guys, we've been hearing about this for, I would say, a year or so that this was probably Senate leader, uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's final term in the U.S. Senate. I think everybody kind of agreed that 2026, he's done. If he somehow decides to run again, he would probably lose in a primary badly. I mean, that probably explains why he's been utterly useless the past two years or so. But either way, it appears Minority Leader McConnell is possibly going to retire as early as this year, which is a significant update out of the state of Kentucky and overall phenomenal news. Now, before we get into why this is great news and what happens if he does retire, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the Twitter accounts in the description down below. Guys, go follow Real American Politics on Twitter. Come on, we can get those followers numbers up before, you know, Twitter censored us in 2020. We were at a pretty high milestone, but let's try to get those numbers up. Of course, go follow the Rumble page down below. Guys, come on. Go follow it because there is exclusive content on that channel that you will not see on YouTube. That's not saying anything against YouTube. Just there is some content that I've decided to post just on Rumble. And of course, join the channel today. Guys, just for $3 a month, you could join Real American, which is a phenomenal deal as it helps support the daily content we all know and love. You love the daily content? Well... This is the best way to support it, as just for $3 a month, you could join the channel today. Click that blue button down below, and you could join the channel just for $3 a month. Alright everybody, let's get into this significant update out of the freaking blue in the state of Kentucky. So, I think most of us agreed that, like I said in the intro, this was probably Mitch McConnell's final, well, I would say it was 99% of his last term. I mean, he's what? 80 some at this point and you know if you thought people hated mcconnell three years ago boy you haven't seen anything yet in the last two years mitch mcconnell damaged his what i would say was relatively a successful majority leader term i mean from 2014 to 2020 i i hate to admit it mcconnell was a damn effective majority leader Unlike the clowns in the House of Representatives, yes, he may have disagreed with Trump on things here and there, but relatively speaking, anything Trump wanted passed or done in the Senate, McConnell would would have gotten it done for him, and in particular, the judges. Now, there's some questionable judges McConnell pushed forward, but McConnell was a machine when it came to confirming judges. Every millisecond you heard, federal district judge here, district judge here, district judge here. And that was always McConnell's secret weapon. He knew how to screw over the Democrats. He knew how to get stuff passed. But in particular, it was rushing and forcing through judges ASAP. So Democrats had no time to respond. Bam, 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 bam. Another judge. It was perfect. But really the crack started the show in late 2020 when arguably he costed us the U.S. Senate. What, say what you will about Trump. Let's be real here. What hurt Republicans more in the 2021 runoff in Georgia? The, uh, the Lynn Wood people, you know, telling five people don't vote. Or was it Donald Trump giving Republicans an easy layup of, an, of a policy of an increased stimulus check? And even the Democrats agreed to it. It was a bipartisan thing that if McConnell just said, We'll do it after the election. We will get a stimulus package passed for more stimulus checks to people. Republicans would have won at least David Perdue's seat. Instead, McConnell said, no, no. What are you freaking doing? You don't say no. Rep I mean, this is what Democrats always understand. Half the stuff or 90% of the stuff they say they're going to do, they don't actually do, but they campaign on it. They're not honest about what they campaign Republicans. They sound so tough on the campaign trail, but when you're the Senate Majority Leader and you have such an easy layup, how many voters decide, you know what, I'm having troubles paying off my debts right now, and 
the Democrats are saying they're going to give me a stimulus check that could potentially help me get out of this pandemic, financial pickle that I'm in. No dur, they're going to vote for the Democrats. Give me a break that it was Lynn Wood scaring people off. Yes, that may have done maybe a quarter of a percent of the base at most. Either way, if they would have passed the stimulus check, Purdue would have won. Let's stop this BS that, oh, McConnell helped the Republican. He screwed them. It was such an easy thing. Never said since he's been downhill. Dude, you used to be such an effective Senate leader. I never liked McConnell. Well, I kind of, I liked him when he confirmed judges and whatever Trump wanted done in the Senate, he somehow got it done. But man, your one thing was forcing judges through and screwing Democrats over. You couldn't even do that. I mean, you just bent the knee on every single thing Biden wanted done. Where was McConnell from Obama years where, uh, let's see here, what was it? He said, like, you know, they, they changed the filibuster rules with judges, like, you're going to regret it, <laughs> and you're going to regret it sooner than you thought. Yes, that was McConnell a couple years ago where he said, look, you're going to regret what you just did with the filibuster, and he was right, but he's been useless. So enough of the rant about Mitch, about Mitch McConnell. It seems like, though, that ever since he had that serious fall a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago, it seems like there's been talks that he may return to the, he is returning to the Senate from what I'm aware of, but it does not sound like he's going to last possibly through this year. He may be done before the end of the year. I'm not saying it's 100%, but there's already been a couple senators looking at that majority leadership role. I mean, this is such a critical moment for Republicans in the Senate because there's really three options. John Barroso from Wyoming, John Corner of Texas, and John Thune of South Dakota. These are the three people that have any serious shot of become the next majority leader. I wish somebody like Rick, uh, not even Rick Scott at this point, maybe like, I don't think Holly would run. It's it's going to be a, just a can of worms open, but... There's only one option here that I would be okay with, and that's John Barroso of Wyoming. He, is he perfect? No. He's okay. He, he's just a very generic Republican of Wyoming. But the other two, you thought McConnell was useless? Boy, you haven't seen anything. John Cornyn, I would say, did a lot of damage to Republicans in 2022. Say what you will about the, you know, how we need to, you know, stop mass shootings. The way Cornyn did it was, oh, we're going to take away your guns. As a senator from Texas, when the Republican Party is like 99% pro-gun, gun voters are your arguably more, fe- more of a sway of the electorate than abortion voters are. And actually, that's statistically proven. So why did you piss off them? When they're your abortion voters, they vote no matter what. If there's guns in the ballot... Oh, crap, we need to vote. Instead, you're going to pass these background checks and, you know, bend the knee on guns? What are you doing? Especially in an election year. Considering the fact that you were from Texas of all states, that's pathetic. And Jonathan, we all know about him. He is just, no, just no. So John Barroso, he's really our best option. That's pathetic. That our Senate delegation is so bad, you got like what? Four good senators, a lot of meh, and a lot of complete trash. So I hope the 10 senators that voted for Rick Scott, they get behind Barroso. He's the only one here that's even somewhat competent. The other two are just, I I, I don't know what they're on. Cornyn costed us house, I, I no, he did cost us 2022 in certain states. Let's be real here. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. How many voters were turned off because... The Republican Party, which is supposed to be my pro-gun, they bent the knee on the one thing they've been conservative on for 30 years. The one thing they've actually pushed back on the left on, they suddenly reverse course. You are pathetic. Now, people are concerned that, oh, well, if McConnell, you know, retires this year, uh, they're, uh, they're going to, you know, the Democrat governor of Kentucky, he could choose a replacement. Not really. And this is a thing many people need to understand about Kentucky. They're one of the, I think they are the only state where the governor, yes, 
He does technically choose, or he fills in the vacancy, but there's a big catch. And I think this should be the law for every state, for any open housey, because I hate the fact that we have like 99-year-old clowns that they don't retire because if they retire, let's say a Democrat governor of Louisiana, he's going to nominate a Democrat for that seat. And I think this should be the law. So what it is, is the party that the person retired from, you know, let's say it's Joe Schwo of Kentucky third or whatever. If he's a Democrat and he retired, all right, let's just say he retired in the middle of this term or whatever. And there's a vacancy. The Kentucky governor chooses, but the party that he's part of the, the vacancy was part of, so in this case, a Democrat, they would send the governor three choices. He has to pick one of the three. If he doesn't, I think the state legislator picks? I don't know for certain, but essentially, he has to pick what the party decides. I like this, because it's BS where you get these Democrat governors in Kansas, and you have these 80-year-old congressmen who, they will not retire. If they're in such bad health they can't move, they will not retire because... Let's say there only is a one house seat majority. Well, guess what? The Democrat would nominate a Democrat in that vacancy and flip the house. So I think this should be state law everywhere. And in Kentucky, what would happen is there would be three people the Kentucky GOP chooses as their vacancy. So the governor of Kentucky has to pick one of those three. So you're going to get a Republican. It's a matter of if it's good or not. Now, I would still wait till... 2023 or 2024 i should say hopefully if we win the governorship daniel cameron please win please, you're the only one that can beat that clown in kentucky if it's uh governor cameron next year you probably would get the more conservative option if we get one this year it's probably going to be the most moderate of the three but hopefully the kentucky gop like they nominate three thomas macy's or something crazy like that but who knows either way I do like the fact that it seems like we are going to get something better because you can't get any worse than McConnell. There's a reason his popularity is like 5%, you know? That's not even a joke. Outside of Kentucky, and even Kentucky, his popularity is like 30%. There's nobody that I know that says, yeah, McConnell's such a great guy. The only people that worship McConnell are the people that are on Twitter that say, McConnell saved us in 2022. Shut up. Just shut up about that. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the Twitter accounts in the description down below. And join the channel today. Thank you so much. Godspeed to all of you.